And now, Pogtendo presents Side Quest Cinema. Anniversary Collector's Edition. Goonies never say die. Ah! Jump into the action on Blu-ray. Ah! With remastered picture inside. <laughs> you'll go places you never imagined. Plus, the Anniversary Edition comes with loads of Goonie goodies. Oh my God! You guys look. Get ready for the adventure of a lifetime. Let's get out of here! Ah, welcome back to the Raging Campfires. That's right, guys. You hear it crackling? Oh, baby, that's what we're doing. Uh, it is summertime. We're in Podtendo. We got Raging Campfires. Oh, baby, you better believe we're watching a movie outside here in the woods. I'm your co-host, Mick, and I'm joined by... Tyson. And we talk about movies on a video game podcast for some reason. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cause sometimes it's easier than playing a whole video game. That's true. And we like to do kind of like a summer movie. So this obviously goes with two weeks ago, we released Goonies 2 on the NES. This is our the review of The Goonies, the 1984 movie. So kind of a cult classic, I guess you'd call it, right? Is this the definition of cult classic, this movie? Um, it's definitely up there cause I feel like it, um, it's always just kind of been really well revered and yeah. people keep going back to it. So, but I don't know if it has like the following as say like a, a Rocky horror picture show. That's probably more of like the quintessential cult classic, right? People dress up. It's always showing in theaters. I think it's yeah, actually, or there's to some a, stat to a lesser extent, like the room. Yeah. Something like, like that. Exactly. Like this is one of those movies you could watch and be like, Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't need to dress up. I can just put it on a lazy Sunday morning. Have a good time. Saturday night? Well, baby, it's a good time. So, uh, I mean, or is it? You'll have to keep listening to find out. Yes, yes, because... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, who knows if we liked this movie. Oh, it is a shock. You have to keep... Yeah, we need to, like, pull back the reins a little bit. Or that's just... That's our shows. We're like, you know what? Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah. This one? Probably watch Pretty it. Good. You want to you hear us talk about it? Stick around. Because it's a fun movie to kind of go back to. Who and wants to I listen to a... two guys talk about a 39-year-old movie? God, 39. Wow. Uh, that's disgusting, isn't it? I, know I just did the math in my head, and I was like, mm, I don't like this. Like, the f- next that... year, next year's the 40th anniversary of this movie. We could have done this for, on the 40th anniversary. Ah, uh, son of a gun. We definitely should have just moved this forward a year. Ah. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what? 39, pretty cool year, too. Yeah. It's a solid one. We like 39. Yeah. Yeah, it should be good. Uh, with that, though, the Goonies. I think we're just getting into it. Uh, again, not that we have anywhere to go. We're just chilling, 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 killing, taking take names, you know. But the Goonies uh, was released June 7th, 1984. The runtime was 114 minutes, almost two hours. Wow. The budget of this movie was $19 million with a box office return of $125 million. And you think, that's not that great. I believe, no. We'll talk about it after development details. Yes. Because maybe the notes there. Uh, director was or was directed by Richard Donner, produced by Richard Donner and Harvey Bernhard. The cast included Sean Astin, Josh Brolin, Jeff Cohen, Corey Feldman, Carrie Green, Martha Plumpkin, and Ki Hu Kwan. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Couple Oscar winners in this this group. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know what? I I really in, enjoy this movie. This is a quick two hour movie. Like, it does not feel like two hours when mm-hmm. I'm watching this. This feels like a 90-minute movie. For- oh, it, yeah, absolutely. You go through and you're like, oh, they're already at this scene? Like, I feel like there's so much more. That, like, it, it, it does kind of... That's how I almost remember it as well, is it kind of seems it appears longer. And then as you're actually, like, kind of working your way through it, you're like, they're already at the piano. That's, like, the end of the movie. What happened to the rest yeah. of it? Right? They're yeah. like... Yeah. So... Okay, cool. Well, let's find out how this movie came to be with some of looking at our Podtendo's terrible development details. Oh, no, everything's terrible on this show. Because that's another segment that's also terrible. Oh, what have I done? Filming began on October 22nd, 1984 and lasted five months. 
An additional six weeks of audio dubbing was needed. And it shows. There are a lot of dubbing. The script was 120 pages long, which meant a sequence... A lot of sequences were cut out, notably the octopus scene that is mentioned at the end. Donner mentioned that it was both a thrill and pain to work with so many child actors. They brought a lot of fun and energy to the scene and the set. The first take, the first take of the Goonies seeing the pirate ship. What? Oh, I see what I'm trying to say. Uh, they... So, so the part of the end of the movie where they reveal this giant uh, pirate ship that they'd built was an actual prop that they did. So they had a big pool, big lagoon. They had built this, and they wanted to kind of get this um, genuine reaction from all the actors. So what they did was they got them all into the actor or into the water, made sure that they didn't turn around, and then genuinely had all the kids f- turn around. Uh, and the first take was corrupted due to Josh Brolin saying, holy shit. And some of the reactions were a little bit more over the top than what they were going for. So they ended up having to redo that scene. Ah, ah. Well, you know what? I think they should have just kept in that that swear. Uh, well, apparently everyone else too. Like they weren't acting like the Goonies. They were like like jumping up and down and being all crazy. And they're like, well, you guys have been in this cave for several hours. You probably are going to a little more, a little more reined in, guys. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Yeah, that's okay. fair. That's fair. The f- filming was done in Astoria. The Walsh family home is the real home on the east end of town. Uh, address is 368 38th Street. So. Neat. If you're out on the west coast traveling around and you're in Astoria, you're like, hey, GPS. 368 38th Street, please. Or yeah. if in your town, if there is a 338 38th Street, you could buy that address and be like, oh, I have the same address as the Goonies. Because I, I sometimes look up, like, I know... Somewhere my phone is written like Doc Brown. It's like 1640 Riverstone Drive. There's a lot of Riverstone Drives out there in the world. So you Google that in and you're like, I could live in Doc Brown's house from Back to the Future. Because <laughs> that's how it works. That, well, that's how it works. I mean, yeah, you're right. I probably shouldn't have so much whimsy. I'm sorry. Underground sets were filmed at the Warner Brothers studio in Los Angeles. This was the first film that Wes Takahashi, an animation supervisor for ILM, worked on. Ah, and I was going to look at other things that Takahashi... No, that's homework. Hmm. That's homework for everyone else. And Josh Gad had hosted two Goonie reunions for charity on his YouTube channel in April 2020 and December of 2020. That's all wow. the development details. Wow. That's, uh, it's neat that they hosted it twice in the same year. Well, um, that was pandemic. That was like there was a lot of yeah. You know. We need we need things to do. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that's. I I think it's neat to kind of dive into this movie because it is kind of fascinating that like this random movie that's kind of like about just a generic kind of adventure. Yeah. Is just so memorable and so epic. I. Well, I mean, it's kind of an overtop, uh, what's it called, film something, a something fantasy. It's a childlike fantasy, right? That you find a treasure map and you go on a little hunt with your friends to your town, right? And you find hidden treasure and there's traps. So it's, it's, like, a, it's like a fantasy fulfillment, right? Just more for children? Because it does kind yeah. of, yeah, as much as this movie kind of feels grounded maybe at the beginning, there's a little bit of over-the-top kind of zany goofiness right even just think of when the kids are all coming in the house data has a zip line into their house and rips, rips the screen that's not real <laughs> it's true it's pretty amazing though yeah it just seems always a little bit more uh, surreal just kind of uh throw the whole film right we'll even like think of the i mean we'll get we can get into it but the opening scene where they have like the jailbreak oh yes you think yes. i really was so stupid i'd hang myself you mook <laughs> he reads it looks at the guy and he's like what's this supposed to mean <laughs> <laughs> and then gets punched. Yeah, just so silly. Like, so it's it's one of those things. I think it's a surreal world that they create from the beginning. So it it's just kind of a like a child's fantasy in this, I don't know, f- more fantastical take on reality. Yes. Yeah. yeah very much so. Um, but it's very enjoyable. I love what they do. Yeah. So. Oh, certainly. Uh, one part I, I was going to mention earlier, and I didn't. Uh, we look at they say the hundred five or one hundred and four million dollar box office return, right? 
Uh, that's just a discrepancy between budget and the box office that I've drawn. And I don't think that factors in like home video rentals and uh, video sales. That was a bigger part of this. And I think kind of, again, why it has more of a cult following uh, is it was very big movie store rental, uh, probably bigger with kids outside of the theater, right? So it made a lot of money um, as a franchise, not just in box office dollars, though. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Also, it's... um. I feel like probably just cable streaming rights. Sure. Oh, cable rights. yeah. Because this thing was always oh, HBO. on cable. Yeah, HBO probably had this like going every day kind of thing. If you were a kid with HBO back in the day, you could probably be like, oh, I watched Goonies literally every day on HBO. So, yeah, yeah, that you could probably watch like that and The Simpsons all day, every day yeah. and never watch anything else. So it is it's one of those things financially, uh, it's just hard to measure those metrics, right? Uh, because we don't really have those things, especially like streaming nowadays. Like what kind of revenue does that generate? You watching a streaming service? We don't know. At some point we'll find out, but just it's not always the most perfect metrics saying box office makes a movie great. No, no. And there's lots of movies that didn't do good in box office and were classics. Yeah, so. after the fact. Okay, cool. How about for ourselves, So Now we know what the development details looked like. We talked a little shop with box offices. Oh, that's exciting stuff. Let's look at our own first memories of this movie. Oh, wow. All right. So I, I, I recall sort of kind of maybe hazy seeing this movie a few times, I would say, uh, in my life maybe before i was like the age of 25 so kind of before then uh, mom always seemed very excited to watch it and share it with us um i don't know if i ever understood the hype though it was one of those movies where i'm like yeah i saw the goonies but i don't know if it's anything special right we never had it on vhs we never had it on dvd so i always had kind of a limited exposure to the film um and i just don't know if i have honestly like the fondest memories right i recall kind of liking it understanding the traps the kiss scene sloth uh, but most of the plots and the characters kind of didn't leave much of an impression on me. Had you asked prior to my, my in the last five years or so I've, as I've gone back and kind of watched this, I'm always like, I don't get it, you know. It it left me feeling like this movie kind of didn't age well. Uh, and there's just kind of recalling there being several big issues. Okay, cool. How about yourself, Taste? Do you have any first memories? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, this is always kind of a like a fun movie was usually on tv so we watched it yep. um I remember kind of being scared of sloth at first and then really like loving him because um yeah he's i think he's a good character i think it's fun filled with like lots of fun characters and as a kid i really related to them and it's um kind of the story of how like the kids are right and the adults are idiots so as a kid i really related to him I mean, I was felt it was kind of a little hard to watch, but now that I know it's two hours or something like that, it's like that makes sense. My yeah. brain was probably like trying to get on to the next th- next thing, but the movie was still going. Um, so it probably was like hard to sit through as a kid, but I always remember enjoying it. So okay, nice, solid, sweet. Uh, and then for that, um, my only other note, yeah, like I don't recall any specific events or like us watching it. Uh, I do know that. Again, it just again, it seemed like one of those movies that Mum kind of shared with us and had more laughs and would have little bits and like recalled things. But I mean, when I was eighteen, nineteen, guys would make Goonies references, and I was like, I don't know if I've seen that movie enough to recall it. And I got generally like kind of like, oh no, it's, it was a big movie. I watched it all the time as a kid, and I was like, no, I kind of feel like I missed out on uh, having it more in my life, right? And it could just be rental situation again did i have it if i had it on vhs probably watched it every day right would have loved it but just don't have access to it you don't really watch it and obviously i don't know cable for whatever reason didn't find me i did however show it to a group of people last summer when we were out doing like a little drive-in we threw up a sheet everyone sat around kind of we were outside on our patio at mom and dad's like at the lake uh we had the projector going people were in the hot tub we sat and had drinks and a lot of them it was their first time watching it a very mixed response like some people being like i didn't like it it aged well why was sloth like such a weird like why did they have such weird makeup on this like make him a monster man uh they didn't like this there was too much over talking it was kind of confusing right so it was just interesting kind of getting that again we're coming at it from kind of having the nostalgia blindness nostalgia glasses with this kind of movie experience saying oh it was the best it was the greatest and fresh people seeing it who I mean, I don't know if I if you all are like all their their thoughts and feelings on certain movies, right? But or like at least respect them. I can respect their takes, I suppose. And 
yeah, it was just interesting, the mixed response. And I was like, huh, is this movie just a nostalgic trip? So if you've seen it back in the day, it's great. Getting to it now, you're like, eh, it seems like a 40-year-old movie. Um, yeah, I, I, I th- seem to take it as if you connect to this as a kid, you probably still connect to it as an adult. <laughs> sure. If you didn't connect to it as a kid, you're probably not going to connect to it as an adult. Um, and if you never watched it as a kid and watching it as an adult, you're going to be like, I don't get this movie. And you're like, yeah, it's kind of the point. Mm-hmm. It's kind of not for you. It's kind of, this is like movie is about kids and like their perspective of the world. And that's why I think like this movie does do a really good job. Um, because like Richard Donner got to know these kids and this is kind of the kids movie. All the boring, dumb parts of this movie are everything to do with the adults. Yeah. The, the, every time the kids are in, and like, it, then that's what this movie's kind of aimed at, and that's why like I connected to it because I mean I guess MS must have just watched it a lot enough as a kid that I was just like, yeah, I like Mikey and I, I relate to this character and I relate to that character and I kind of want to be like that character and it's, um, it was it, it did the job of um, hooking me hooking it on to me so I I really appreciate this movie but I could see why some people would not like it especially watching it as an adult yeah okay cool no, that's fair and yeah, yeah you're right it, it is one of those things that it's not meant for adults that was, that was a good take that was a good um it, just just point huh you didn't like the kids movie well, it's because you're an old adult that has no sense of wonder that makes sense now that we've been talking about this for over a quarter of an hour oh my goodness look at us look at us go let's get to maybe you haven't seen it before maybe you're one of those few it's just been a while and you need a quick recap of what the plot is so that's why i have potendo's terrible patented plot summary for you fun folks we start off with watching a jailbreak through a small coastal town before meeting the goonies a group of misfits spending their last weekend at home before their parents sell off their land they discover a pirate map in an old attic Infiltrate the Fratelli's evil lair. Chunk meets Sloth, their disfigured brother, and the rest of the gang finds a pirate or a hidden pirate entrance. The Fratelli's capture Chunk and interrogate him, while the other Goonies explore a series of treasure caves. They narrowly escape the Fratelli's due to an old pirate piano and water slide. They finally get captured on an old pirate ship, but are saved by Chunk and Sloth. Some TNT blows up the cave, and the Fratelli's are arrested. Sloth is adopted, the Goonies are reunited with their parents and save the town with some pirate jewels, while the pirate ship sails off to sea. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of like there's two villains. The Fratellis are like the immediate danger. Um, they're racing to the, yep. to the um, treasure. And then there's also the bank and that sneaky real estate developer oh, it's, like, it's like those da- those damn adults in the real world ruin the world it's like yeah it's a good time I, and I like it I think it's a it's a good little fun adventure oh certainly yeah no it, it definitely kind of c- captures your imagination right as you kind of are d- diving through it right and you're right there are kind of the overarching nemesis these evil pencil pushing red tape bureaucrats from the bank trying to take their land from their parents as well as the goofy more comical comic like fratellis they seem threatening at the beginning but then they start losing their hair and they sing opera and they have a goofy they slide down things and there's like yeah they're they're comic relief yeah they quickly become quickly becomes home alone (laughs) yeah it does it kind of like pulls it back just a little bit so with that now that we know what the plot is you know what our first experience you know this movie came to be oh baby let's get into the review proper shall we and we look at what is our favorite part of the movie so we're gonna start with our big positive big takeaway what is your favorite part of the movie um booby traps okay uh it's it's one of my favorite parts. Um, it's all the, the booby traps that just come up on all the gadgets makes um <laughs> makes like the kids seem like they're like way more prepared for the situation than it is. And it's just like it's just random stuff to make the kind of plot progress. But I love the way it it kind of keeps happening and all the different stuff. Like this time it's slicks and this time it's like a yo yo or whatever. And it's always like. That creativity. I was always, um, what are those t- machines that, uh, like to make an egg, there's like all these different, like, pattern, like, the, the ball will roll down and knock over some dominoes. And, uh, 
Yep. A Rube Goldberg machine? It is called a Rube Goldberg machine. Yeah. It's yeah, a very complicated I, I love, machine to do a simple task. Yeah, I love that stuff. And that's what all, every time these, uh, like like him zip lining over, it's like, that. this is amazing. So you like data. Uh, to me, yeah, data's the best. <laughs> okay. um, but just like, and I'll, even in the booby traps, like you got to play the right piano keys or like okay. the floor starts falling away. It's like, feels very video gamey, sure. but yeah, I love it. Okay, so you like all of What's, Data's uh, utility belt functions as well as just the general adventure and, like, traps they have to go through. Yeah, yeah, okay. makes, it, makes it entertaining. No, that's good, What's yeah. What's your favorite part? Uh, yeah, and it does add kind of, like, again, that level of surrealness, whimsy. Oh, he's got a utility belt. He's got the go-go gadget arms or something, right? Uh, it's just kind of that extra little add-on. Cool. For, uh, for myself, yeah, I'm also going to stick with one of the kids. So it wasn't Data, though. It was uh, the, the very own Hobbit, Sean Ashton. And I think just his, like, this is our time speech, right? So he's in the bottom of the well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and then he looks at these wishes, and he looks at these coins, and he's like, these are my wishes. This is our time. And I, I don't get it. Like, Sean Ashton, like, watching that scene, though, has some incredible acting chops, even at, like, a young age, right? He carries this very emotional uh, through point in every scene very well. And for child actors to have some, like, such an amazing grasp on his art, I think it's kind of special, right? Uh, even though the speech is very confusing, I don't understand it. I think he crushes it. I'm like, wow, that was important. I don't know if it contextually it makes sense what he's saying. He's like, our time is, is it's it's not there. It's it's down here and there. And I'm like, what are we talking about? Like, what? <laughs> um, also, why is this like are... underneath this well so like amazing? I don't think it really functions as a well. It seems it has like a lot, a lot, a lot of questions. Uh, but you can tell at that part though. He was like, oh, he's going to be a good actor, right? Going up, he obviously has the chops. Uh, and he carries that scene very well, right? Um, compared to some of the other actors, D- does an amazing job, crushes it, kills it. I just have a lot of questions about. I'm like, mm, what? What, do you, what does this mean? Um, my theory about what that means. And this is just my take when I watch it. Is he's talking about how like this is the kids' time to actually do something and have some control in their lives? Because like, unbeknownst, like. Without outside their control is the the parents' world, and the parents' mm. world is like these Fratellis working against them. Is these the the banker foreclosing their house and forcing them to move and changing their life? Um, their parents always bossing them around, and it's like they they these kids don't have control, and they they like they don't have a time to shine, and that's sure. kind of what he's trying to get across. Okay. That this is their time to like actually do something that freaking matters. And if they don't just do something now, then it doesn't. Then what? Then what? What are they doing? So this is so the he's trying to rally the troops, but he's doing it in a, in a cute kid way that sure kids don't and don't it, know how to give yeah. motivated speeches. They're just going to say kind of the same thing again, but goofily. And I kind of get what he's saying, but that's just my take on it. Yeah. I like this movie. It, so. Yeah, like the broad take. Okay, I think that's what he's getting at. It's just I'm like ah, I got a couple couple more passes. It does seem like the way a kid would kind of give a speech, like it's kind of all over the place, and he gets there, and you're like, all right. Interesting. Like, I'm sure if you had a coach or played a sport, you had a captain somewhere or a coach try and, like, motivate everyone. And then you're like, ah, that motivational speech fell apart in the middle. But, all right, I get what you're saying. Let's go. Woo! Right? So I think that's what he's doing, right? They have the choice to kind of abandon Project, get away from the Fratellis, go to the cops, but then it's over. Right? This adventure is done. They don't have a chance to be heroes. Sure. Cool. Uh, How about what is our most notable scene or part of this movie okay so we can go through these and if one stands out you're like oh let's talk about that one for a little bit so we have the opening jailbreak with the patellis uh going on the high speed chase guns fights all right meeting any of the goonies data's entrance that one has to be one the truffle shuffle oh you still hear yeah. about that all the time uh mouth's spanish translation <laughs> yeah uh, that's just kind of funny do not go in there that is her sex dungeon if you go in there they will torture you and give you no food or water for three days and she's like did you get yeah. all that do you can you, you think you can comprehend i am in a madhouse <laughs> so funny it's like he's just such a little troll yeah how about uh, the discovering of the actual map right so when they're up in the attic uh they give i think chunk they're like hey chunk come hold this i need this glass broken and he instantly just drops it and breaks and like perfect great i knew that's the best way to break glass uh we could get the entering the fatalities lair finding the body uh chunks interrogation uh boulder (laughs) yeah yeah he's funny in that scene yeah 
Uh, he oh. as he's kind of tied down to the chair, and they're saying, "All right, tell us everything you know." So he starts going back in time and telling every horrible thing he's ever done. And by the end, even the ever guy, done, yeah, <laughs> the, like in typical kid, kids fashion, yeah. just everything he's ever thought felt bad about. Yeah. Here it comes. Here it comes, and the the. But at the end, even the villains were like, oh, I kind of like this guy. He's all right, he's all right you know. Uh, the yeah. boulder booby traps. Uh, fun with pipes or toilets exploding. Yep. Uh, Mikey's uh-huh. speech in the waterfall cave. Oh, sorry. Next favorite. The, the, the toilet bowl, it, the toilet ex- exploding scene. It is very, I don't know, it just, it doesn't seem like it belongs in this movie. It's very pratfall uh-huh. It's very slapsticky. It's a pipe explodes and the guy in the toilet blows up into the roof and then falls down and I'm like, what, what's up with that? That doesn't seem like that's how piping should work. That that is a fresh joke for this area. Yeah, <laughs> like I feel like it's ripped straight from a cartoon. <laughs> oh, hundred percent, right? And maybe that's maybe that's part of the the surrealness as we were kind of alluding to, right? And the wonder of this world. It is kind of cartoony, right? It has a kind of that that feel, right? Um, about the men's room, they have to pee. He says, "Well, a little girls' room's this way, a little boys' room this way." Older brother. Yeah comes and says where are you going and he's like the men's room so of course all the little boys see all the boys follow him he's like oh yeah we're men too oh yeah yeah um (laughs) just constantly like always gotta hey gotta gotta keep up with the with the with the whoever makes the biggest comment because we're all idiots yeah yeah again cartoon uh about the piano slash waterfall scene so there's kind of a little bridge they go across we get slick shoes so dad dad put some oil that makes the for Telly Brothers fall kind of like, yeah, Home Alone characters, uh, while they're trying to figure out this bone piano that somehow works and produces actual notes. And yeah, and I, they get I've all those... stared at enough. P- I've also stared at pianos. I don't understand how that keyboard is supposed to like how the like. Yeah, it doesn't work in my brain. Well, it's also like skeleton hands. Where'd they get all the hands from? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't know. Apparently, One-Eyed Willie really murdered a lot of people collected hands for a while i suppose right like again yeah. excellent engineering from these pirates in these old caves like whoo top-notch stuff there uh the water slide scene eh? yeah yep. that's how caves work if you found some running water you'd just be on a little slide that's nice and not jagged and probably gonna kill you fuck no because the what the water would have eroded it so I it's guess. a nice smooth pipe like a water slide that's where that's where that's the ancient water slides that's, these were from the beginning of time man has had water slides and true. water parks you know what actually a couple summers ago we did go to a natural water slide yeah it was down on some old logging road and you kind of parked in the car and then you walk down and the little river had made a little water slide it was kind of fun yeah okay um yeah, okay <laughs> So I was making that up. Nope. That's, I mean, it probably wouldn't be so well lit and like human sized. Mm, yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. About the pirate ship showdown. So getting to the pirate ship, uh, any of the showdown with the Fratellis, uh, or the ending where data says he liked fighting the octopus. <laughs> You're like, why did we not cut this line? Yeah, like, why wasn't that edited? Like, I really like... Or redubbed. You actually redubbed parts of this movie, and you're so like, no, much. this is fine. No, we'll just leave this at Octopus. That makes sense. That was a really expensive scene that we filmed. What? Right? Mouse just like, been like, oh, and then we saved Annie the Mermaid at the end. Like, no, like I, that was the video game. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I really, I, I'm really going to miss Annie the Mermaid. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Don't you remember Annie the Mermaid from our adventure? It's remember like, two weeks ago we talked about her? She was a very cr- crucial part to these Goonies. That's where she came from. Okay. She's one of the Goonies, one of the most important members. There you go. So of all those, though, what is the most notable? So it's that part of the movie, as we kind of mentioned, those kind of the big parts. That stays with you the longest. You think Goonies. You're like, oh, yeah, that part. Um, Sloth. Okay. Sure. Just in general. Yeah. Um, but I, I remember the, hey, you guys, <laughs> yeah. him screaming that. Like, that part sticks out in my brain even to this day. I think from, yeah, uh, I, I, yeah, that's definitely a thing that people will say. And if you said that, people would be like, oh, I understand the reference 100%. That's exactly what most notable scene is supposed to be. I would say maybe the truffle shuffle, right, has kind of lived up yeah. a little bit too, right? You've seen that kind of pop up from time to time. Uh, for myself, though, I'm going to probably go skeleton piano. Slash like water slide, yeah. like that, that end kind of part that always kind of stood out to me is that's kind of a, a pretty cool, unique set piece, right? We haven't seen that. When was the last time you saw a pirate skeleton piano and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I, should I take piano lessons? Huh. Are pirates the coolest thing in the world? Hmm. Musical. Maybe Disney. I feel like Disney was 
took all their inspiration for the Pirates movies from this section. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, yeah I could see that. Uh, so, one of those one of those three that we probably mentioned probably are the most notable scenes. However, though, we got to get a little bit negative. We've been pretty saying nice things about this movie. What are some criticisms, some negatives? Let's. What is our least favorite part of the movie? Yeah, I'm looking at um, yours, and I think I kind of have to agree. Yeah. It's, um, for me, it's Chunk. Yeah. 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 It's uh, just irritating. Uh, Chunk, I think I kind of meant to say sloth. Oh. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, yeah. I mean Chunk. Okay. Chunk's kind of like just grating on me. And as a fat kid, as a kid, I'm like, mm. I don't like this character. Okay. <laughs> I'm too, he's too relatable to I, who I am I, as a person. I don't like looking into my own soul. So, okay. All right. That's <laughs> Chunk. Like, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, he's kind of yeah, a little bit more the top. He's definitely a bit more annoying. He is... He's kind of whiny in lots of his acting, too, I find, right? Uh, even his yeah. interrogation, he's always kind of toggle like this. And you're like, yeah, I get it. Okay, I get yeah. it. Yeah. Well, also, like, the whole, like, so at the beginning, the the, he's, the uh, police chase is happening, and then he turns around at the arcade and, like, smushes his, like, milkshake, yeah. and then realizes that it's like, oh, shit, and throws it down. And you're like, Ugh, this is just irritating. Like, is your brain just not connected to who you are as a person? I don't know. I know I get it for the joke, but it's just like this clumsy moron. I get it, he's like kind and stuff, but it's like God. Yeah. Being clumsy and a moron just kind of triggers me, maybe because okay. I'm a clumsy moron. Cool. All right. Uh, for myself, I meant to say sloth, and Tyson agreed with me. He is kind. He is sweet. Uh, but I find that the makeup is a little bit over the top and really does age this film a lot, right? Like, he's kind of this big, deformed-looking monster. And then there's kind of this moment at the end with the Mama Fratelli, and she kind of makes some comment. He's like, oh, I just dropped you on your head several times. That's why your head's all messed up. And I'm like, what the fuck? We're like, you dropped your baby? Because, like, his head's really messed up. And his teeth are all over the place. And eh, I don't know. It just seems... A little bit too surreal, right? In this car- car- cartoon world where we believe s- pirate skeletons exist and there's, there's underground treasure and booby traps. And uh, I don't know. I just, I'm like, e- with, with some just normal prosthetics, right? Like you didn't have to go o- so over the top and have like the big goofy mask. I, I, I think it probably would age a little better, right? Uh, it's, it's fine for the film, right? Um, I have nothing against his character. I think he's great. It just seems like a little bit too much makeup on that one. Yeah, yeah, and I know it's kind of a prosthetics and practical effects are really popular right now, Mm -hmm. so I feel like it's a little bit one of those things where, you know, we shove CGI and everything. It's like this is kind of like we need to shove practical effects in this movie somehow. Oh, yeah, I could see that. Sure. Yeah, they're Um, they're kind of like, let's go away. and That's what I mean. He looks more like Star Wars-y than he does like he should be living in this world with these kids. Oh, yeah, and I get it. Like, that's what the... Like, he's supposed to look terrifying. Because remember, being a kid, I was so scared of Sloth. Yeah. I was like, oh, no, he's so scary looking. He's a monster. And being a genuine, like, little, little kid just being like... I was scared of him the first time I saw him. Yeah. And then you get to know him, you're like, oh, he's actually, like, nice. I like, I kind of like him. But he, I think that that's the point of the prosthetics, is he's supposed to be terrifying. Um, oh, okay. But at the same time... Uh, because you know it's the '80s. We like Gremlins is a kids movie. I guess everything everything's a little bit like harder edged. Like even even quote unquote scary monsters nowadays look less scary than Sloth. Yeah, yeah. And this is a kids movie, yeah. so yeah, okay. I feel like that's just a symptom of the '80s. Everybody was on cocaine. <laughs> they thought this was fine. Oh, and, and like I said, it, it, like great character he's fine i'm not kicking him out of the movie i'm just saying like dial back that that makeup just a little bit right yeah doesn't have, he doesn't have it comes to look off like he as a little offensive yeah exactly that's the kind of thing and i'm like i don't know but like he's so yeah yeah i love him but it's like the this character kind of comes off as a little offensive. yeah that that's that's exactly my point like i, I do love him i would love him if he was real i just don't know if I don't know. It, uh, over the top. Anyways, criticism. And then a final negative point, then we'll end with one more neg- positive, and we'll get out of here. So my final criticism is just the energy and working with the children actors. I know it can be difficult, right? Like Donner and Steven Spielberg did a great job in kind of railing in the chaotic energy, uh, the over-talking kind of that he the Spielberg likes because that's how people talk in real life, right? Uh, it 
makes it seems definitely seem more genuine, right? You're like, yeah, it's a group of kids, they're all talking. Uh, but sometimes it can be a bit more confusing and disorganized. So I think if they would have just focused a little bit more, trying to get some cleaner takes, right? And spend more time just kind of on the, the craft, right? Uh, refining some of the scenes. Yeah, it was a long script, right? Obviously, shooting with kids, you got to go fast. It's 120 pages. Some editing probably could have helped. And I think just cleaning up a lot of those areas. And you're seeing that. They had how many months of redubbing did I say that they worked on? Six additional weeks of dubbing needed with all the actors because they missed so many scenes, right? And it shows, right? There's lots of scenes where there's talking and confusion and you're like, okay, what's happening? And you kind of have to piece together what, what what's going on. But it is just kind of that, that manic energy. I wish they would have just... Don't, dialed those things in just a little bit more right and i think it would have given us a bit more of a cleaner product right so do you have a criticism that you would or do you have a, a response or a um no i i kind of agree um i think that this movie's long um like it shouldn't be two hours this should be 90 minutes like it, it's got a good pace to yep. it but i'm like if you make this movie 90 minutes and kind of trim some of the fat you have a much better experience like i it does meander at some points um like i, I I'm, I'm like the fun with pipe scene i get it kind of moves him from one point to another it's like yeah you could probably do this another way and save like 10 minutes um sure there's lots of stuff like that we're like yeah, you could probably do this better and it probably cutting out a lot of the over talking and because that does take up time in in a scene where they have to all kind of like shut up so somebody can actually say something but something that's something that would like a scene that'd be like what a minute or a minute and a half mm -hmm. kind of ends up being like three minutes because they people over talk and have jokes and stuff like there's this whole like there was a different dynamic to it so i'm like mm, yeah it could trim a little bit of the fat here so um that would be my criticism it's like i think that you can you can make this leaner movie sure. um i like it as it is but that's my criticism yeah. i also can't think yeah too many well that's the thing like we get nitpicky like you're like movie. yeah cut some stuff out and that's kind of like uh, essentially that's where i'm coming from too right yeah it's kind of long and there's some parts where i'm like ah, i just it's so disorganized like you should have just done a cleaner version of this one take right and uh, i realize once they're kind of off sets it's hard to get people back and um, imagine there's lots of editing and dealing with all those things right so again no, 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 nothing bad it's a good movie it works it just you could definitely make it shorter a little more coherent and you'd be alright how about a final praise though oh man we struggled to say some negatives can we less struggle is it easier to say praises let's find out Tyson what is your final praise of the Goonies um I, I, I guess for me it's a it's a fun little Sunday adventure movie yep yeah. And it's not a perfect movie, but I think it's uh, very nostalgic, and I think it's of its time for sure. But I, I enjoy it. Like the it takes me back to riding around, going on adventure on your, your motor on your bike, and kind of anywhere your bike could take you was your oyster. So you kind of just explored and did whatever you could as far as your bike could take you with your friends. And I think this movie really captures that in an, in essence, and it's kind of like this big grander story to it but it feels like very much like a saturday or sunday adventure with your friends so that's my praise okay nice uh yeah i i, I like i concur like this movie we could sit here and say that there are some issues with the plot right there's some plot or issues with the pacing and the controlling the energy from its cast however this is probably the the best possible version of this film Right, with this many actors, it's coherent, everyone gets a moment, they feel like there is growth between characters, right? Like you feel some of the kind of relationships as they change and grow and you understand the dynamics. Uh, it was genre creating, right? And still has kind of that sense of magic, wonder, uh, whimsy, kind of like comic book surrealness that we've been kind of mentioning to it that just, it, it's in the right mindset and can be very powerful even today, right? Uh, that, that this is Goonies' is its own genre. If you say, oh, it's like a show like The Goonies, that means a bunch of kids are plucky, go on a little adventure, right? They have tons of whimsy and they outsmart guys and they're they're the good guys. Uh, yeah, so, so, I mean, you have to praise something like that, right? The, the fact that this film has a lasting legacy, created a genre, uh, it, again, could have went very, very poorly. Uh, there are tons of examples of just films that, from this ilk, with children actors, kind of high concept that fall and crumble and are too over the top but this one just seems like it kind of has that perfect 
um, balance of realism, surrealism, um, energy, quality acting, uh, that it, it kind of creates this timeless experience, right? That uh, echoes throughout, well, I don't want to say eternity. That, that sounds like too bold of a statement, but at least the next 40 years, that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that maybe like this. No, no, next no, genera- no. Eternity. Echoes through eternity. Yeah, that's my statement. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Okay, I was going to say, yeah, maybe this next generation doesn't love it as much as ours, but um, I, I feel like as people kind of get older, they, they go back and they watch older movies. Um, so this movie will always kind of be discovered and cherished. And sure. I, I enjoy it, and um, I think it's a it's a fun movie, and it's a good watch. Okay. And uh, it's, it's crazy chaotic, but yeah, it does kind of just jumpstart an entire genre that... Um, really dominated for the better part of like uh, two decades after this. Uh, it's had some resurgences, right? Like you could get into it. I mean, people will call Stranger Things just like that's true. Goonies, right? So I mean, it, it's still around today. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, I, and like heck, even kind of to a lesser extent, Harry Harry Potter. Yeah. Like a, a, yeah. Like yeah, but. Yeah, Goonie, Goonie-esque, right? Has Goonie energy to it for sure. So that kind of ends our review, though, of the Goonies. We yeah, liked I feel it. Like, I feel like Ron could have been a Goonie. Yeah, there you go. It kind of that little bit of manic energy to him a little bit. A little bit of surrealism. A little bit of surreal. Most of it was, like, pretty set in facts. Like, those spells are real, but a lot of Harry Potter. Somewhat surreal. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Mostly Ron. Yeah. Mostly Ron. Cool. So that, that's kind of it. So if you guys are one of those guys that just cut 40 minutes. Oh, huh, sweet. Okay, uh, so we've got a fan theory, a wayback machine, and then a cultural significance, and then we're done. So, yeah, I figured it would probably be like ish an hour type thing, so a couple more minutes here. But that is our review of The Goonies. Oh, baby, good times. Yep, yep. Um, so what's your theory, Vic? Uh, well, so before we do that, though, is there anything that we missed or just want to discuss about this film that we didn't talk about thus far? Like a, a certain scene, a character... Uh, just any other kind of quick follow-ups while we're still kind of in movie movie land. Uh, people that are listening to the podcast are still kind of with us from the actual review before we get into all the extracurriculars. Or you're just like, I think I did an okay job. Like, I, I, I could put my yeah, stamp on this. I I'm, mean, we could kind of go on to, like, every in- character individually. But I'm like, yeah, we haven't got time for this. And do we really care too much about every character's, like, who they are, whatever, and, like, what's their motivation? It's like, nah, I think we'd find yeah. if you If you're interested, go dive into it. We try to cover the major overarching parts and yeah, just stuff, stuff we liked and didn't like. Yeah, stuff I like or you like. That's literally it. Okay, awesome. Okay, so without that, though, and are you buying it? So I had a couple fan theories. Oh, some of the games we've been getting to, not a lot going on. Goonies 2, no fan theories. Goonies, a lot of fan theories. There was one that, like, it's a metaphor for losing your virginity. I didn't read too much into that one. Uh, however, the one I did write down is the events of this movie are all Mikey's delusional fever dream. Right, so you can add Could. all this surrealness. Uh, his his mom does mention you've been quite sick. Stay home, take your medicine, don't go out. Right, so as he's feeling kind of out, does he his mind wander? Does he dream of finding this magical map that all of a sudden he can just translate like nobody's business? Right, all of a sudden he has a clue. So he leads this magical adventure and ends up saving the day. Yeah, literally finds a treasure map in his attic. Yeah. Yeah. Believable. Sure, it's believable. Yeah, sure. Okay. Cool. I mean, from my experience, he does, he does get a he does get a kiss the girl at, at the end of it. Yeah. So yeah. See. Yeah. Lots, lots, lots of good things going on. Uh, I didn't dive much more into that. That was literally the last thing I had it filled in, and I was like, oh no, I'm setting these notes to Tyson in two seconds, and copy paste. Boom. All right. So it could be played as a, a fever dream. Yeah. Lots of fan theories. If you're interested in diving into those things, oh man, there's no. No end, no end to, to the content of Goonies has provided the internet. Just like that segment. Or unlike that segment, which did end. Okay, how about onto our Wayback Machine, our patented Wayback Machine. It's new, improved, it's sleeker, doesn't have all the fat. Oh, baby, it purrs. We are, and we have to ask the age-old question. Do we want to live in June 7th, 1985? Let's find out by looking at what's on the television at that time. Starting this year. So I believe these were started uh, based on popularity the top five shows that started in 1984 were The Golden Girls, hmm, MacGyver, Moonlighting, okay, 
EastEnders, and The Twilight Zone. Oh, okay, interesting. It is This is what, the 80s Twilight Zone. Interesting, interesting, okay. Yeah, it ran for a couple seasons, so... Um, In the 80s? Uh, 85 to 89 or something like that. Yeah, it had a bit of a reboot. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I thought that was like, I'll put that one in there. Tyson's like, what? Okay. How uh, about top cartoons? You're like, Psh, those are boring shows. I don't want to watch a guy who makes bubblegum into the C- C4. I mean, you should. It sounds awesome. Uh, or this, again, Twilight show that may or may not exist. Top cartoons. Maybe that's it. Because you're like, I want to watch cartoons because I'm a kid. The top cartoons that started in 1984 were Thundercats, The Adventures of Gummy mm-hmm. Bears, G.I. Okay. Joe, She-Ra, Excellent. And the Care Bears. Hmm. You know, oddly, not too bad. Yeah. And this is kind of like the birth of Disney TV animation with the gummy bears. Yep. G.I. Joe's going strong and it's teaching your, your values. It's true. Care Bears are there. So when you watch a scary movie, you can unwind with something safe. I did um, watch a lot of Care Bears as a child, so... Yeah, for some reason, it was always on TV. And then Thundercats. Didn't get a lot of... Exp- Exposure to it, but every time it was on, I tried to watch it. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely. When I was like, man, this show's great. I, I've watched like three episodes my whole life. It's like Transformers. A- I've watched like three Transformers, and I was like, I just, I feel like I need a child just so I can watch old cartoons with them to be like, is this, is this terrible? Do you like this? And they're like, yeah. Be like, I don't trust your opinion because like you, <laughs> yeah. you would, you, you should say it's not good because it's terrible. Okay, but maybe yeah. just need more exposure. I, I, I did watch them all, like all the uh, first series of GI Joe. It's not bad. Okay. It's not bad. Okay. At some point, Snake Eyes does do a breakdance and wins a contest. Sick. I think. Okay. <laughs> However, you're like, oh, I don't know. I don't care about the television. What I really care about is the silver screen, the old real house. We'll add on down to the movies and for a nickel, we'll see how much popcorn we can get. Yeah, it fizzled out there at the end. But top movies. So still in theaters. You could see A View to a Kill. Um, epic. All right. You, uh, this is my favorite one of my favorite James Bonds just for the simple game of is that is that Roger Moore or is that not Roger Moore in, uh, in most scenes okay because if he's standing there that's Roger Moore if he's doing things that's not Roger Moore really hmm. interesting most of that movie because he's pretty old at this point oh, sure. but it's like okay. running up some stairs you're like that's not Roger Moore that's hilarious okay standing at the bottom of those stairs is yeah oh, I made it oh whew. I am tired. All right. How about or Fletch or Rambo First Blood Part 2, which I think is the second one, but the naming mechanics of Rambo make it. Maybe the third one. Yeah. Couldn't tell you. Yeah. I feel like that's a franchise I need to watch at some point. Yeah. you probably be like, oh, I get it. I understand all the Simpsons now. Cool. Uh, opening against this movie was a movie called Perfect. Made $12 million in the box office. And then I didn't care to look much more about it. I'm sure Tyson knows nothing about it. So we'll just nope. move on. If we nope. waited a week or two, you could see The Return to Oz, Cocoon, St. Elmo's Fire, and Back to the Future came out at the start of oh. July this year. Man, that's why this like era seems pretty so epic. Yeah. And it's like, ah, Back to the Future? This is a good time. Right. Return to Oz is scary. Cocoon's decent. Never seen Elmo's, St. Elmo's Fire. Never seen it. But Back to the Future, I want Dorian so bad. It's got that like cool song. It's like Saint Elmo's Fire. Oh, that might be Hearts on Fire. Mm, all right, but like you've also <laughs> like Saint Elmo's Fire is a song, and I'm like, oh yeah, it definitely is. says. I couldn't tell you what it was though, and I can't tell you now. And then finally, top video games to just that nail in the coffin. Are we gonna go travel back and live in 1985? You get Super Mario Brothers, Gauntlet, Gradius, Gyromite, NES Soccer, and Ghost and Goblins. Ooh. I hate ghosts and goblins so much. Yeah. <laughs> Super Mario Bros. So it's like, wow, video games are going to start getting good. Gradius is it's a side-scroller shooter, whatever yeah, the heck it sure. is. Um, Gauntlet's fun. It's not Gauntlet 64, the classic. Mm-hmm. And uh, who doesn't love soccer? I saw it, and it's just that like, boring black box with just a little dude... His little eight bit cute guy kicking a ball. And I was like, all right, that's kind of uh, cool. Sweet. It's not it's not it's not even the dog cart the nope. dog uh mascot yet. Ah oh, boo. No, that wasn't until I the I don't like soccer. But that wasn't until like, like soccer. nineteen ninety two or ninety four or something like that when the dog because it was when the um, the USA hosted the World Cup. That was like their mascot. Oh okay. So it wasn't even around Got yet. You. 
Yeah, boo. I don't like soccer until that guy comes around. Okay. He's the true hero of soccer. That's fair. Okay, sweet. So with that, though, that ends our Wayback Machine, and we're probably going to be like, meh, 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 meh. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we'll see. Cool. Uh, so all we have to do is a cultural significance, and then we are out of here for this week. Uh, in this section, we look at game design. Ah, uh, bop, bop. Movie design? The lore? Ah, uh, eh. The turning? Eh. Interesting stories. We talk about how this m- uh, movie relates. Give other examples and tie it all back together in the end. Uh, this segment works much better for video games, obviously. I need to change it for films. Uh, well, I'll get to it. So uh, the film defined the genre of plucky group of kids goes on an adventure, right? This film is praised as a classic and as a cult hit by those who remember it fondly in their youth. Uh, but a more modern audience has reacted to the dated, busy, manic movie that they found... That they have found for the first time with less acclaim. All right. Uh, the movie gave Hollywood a blueprint for children adventure stories. You need a cast of stereotypical kids, high energy, and a lack of parent interference. Movies like The Mighty Ducks, Jumanji, even TV series like Stranger Things. Uh, we can all kind of owe homage to this great 80s classic. So normally, I do a best, like a list of the best Goonie ripoffs or a list of movies that the where the cast went on to make or something like that uh but instead i kind of like that this goonies in my mind this 1980s these spielberg movies i kind of put them in this big broad category known as like drive-in movies right so they're movies that kind of have a certain magic appeal you can't watch them in high def right you need a little bit less def hence the drive-in you want the projector you want the dirty screen maybe you want a bed sheet or just like an old tv and a dvd kind of version you don't need that 4k And it just makes the movies look better. So today what I have for you is a list of the 26 top best drive-in movies. And I guess we just go through the list and say, wow. I don't don't know. Or I disagree completely. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what you're doing with this, but there's a list. uh, And we kind of have to thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah, sure. Okay, sweet. All right. So the top, do you want to go bottom up? Probably. Probably, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll leave number one. Make your guesses now before we get there. All right. So, again, we're looking at best drive-in movies. So, the movie is uh, the, the experience of it, the magic, the the wonder is heightened due to kind of like a little bit low, low def. Maybe being outside can add to it as well. Uh, we'll start with, let's do pairs of three for a little bit and see where that gets us. So, the bottom three, 26 to 24, are Stand By Me, Grease, and Avatar. Yeah, I mean, I'll watch me some Stand By Me anytime. Yeah, uh, we actually the other two just I could watched Stand By Me on a TV outside at the lake this last week, so I agree. Nice. Yeah, yeah, holds up. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, a little more old-timey, has the magic. Uh, I don't think Avatar would fit the bill because it, it needs to look pretty, right? Avatar isn't a great movie, it just looks amazing. Right, so if you kind of lose the low def, I don't know if it's there, uh, but I would also probably agree like a movie like Grease would probably hold up in that kind of setting, right? It would kind of bring a little something out. It's about a bunch of greasers that hang out at a movie and sing, so or like a drive-in. That's 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 fair. Yeah. I uh, don't like musicals. Yeah, so. okay, that's fair. How about number 23 to 21? We have Ferris Bueller's Day Off at 23, The Matrix at 22, and The Terminator at 21. Yeah, they seem like they kind of yeah suit the bill. Matrix a little less so because it's a little more futuristic mm-hmm. or whatever. And I feel like adding the graininess to it would kind of make it feel more like uh, you're in Zion watching the sto- the story of Neo. Sure, yeah. And I, if I, if yeah. somebody made a movie, yeah, you can you can make the head can of work. I think it'd be fun. Yeah, I, I could see that for sure. And I like even say like a Terminator probably over Terminator Two, right? Uh, is probably the better. Just you want more gritty outdoor uh, movie. I'd probably view that one. Ferris Bueller is a classic. A little bit older. Running through the backyard scene. Yeah, maybe maybe you put that on and you like time it. So somebody runs through your backyard at that exact moment. You're like, wow, just like the movie, crazy. And Matrix, hey. it is a probably not how do i how do i state this the matrix is probably one of the most important movies made in the last like 30 years right in terms of what it gave us with uh bullet time just to the story to just even the story right going into that movie when was the last time your mind was blown as much as it was with the matrix or uh changed how we just 
the terminology that came from it, right? Like, oh, we're in the Matrix now, and everyone says, yep, okay, cool. Just kind of this culturally encompassing event, uh, and that was the Matrix, and... I mean, that movie must yeah. be getting to... It, it, it was like giving catnip to a cat when CGI to Hollywood. The Matrix was just like, here's drugs, buddy. 99? No the Matrix is 25 years old? Yeah. Wow. That's why it's so important, because it's like, this this wasn't... like, see, like well, Jurassic it, Park was the, the other sure. big CGI masterpiece at that uh, point. But I think it was even in terms of storytelling. I think The Matrix did something that other movies haven't done, right? Like, it did kind of created its own little world that we just don't see, right? Uh, we saw it with, say, like, Game of Thrones and Harry Potter's, these kind of these big epic events, right? Lord of the Rings captured a little bit of that magic, but The Matrix did kind of have this, I don't know, it just it, the way it created the world and what it did, uh, pretty, pretty cool. Okay, how about number 20 to 18 so we have tw- 20 is titanic 19 is austin powers international man of mystery and 18 is beauty and the beast but the live action from a couple years ago what yeah yeah that one is like okay who made this list i don't know why is this why is this at 18 i yeah the live action one with yeah Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, sure. Uh, okay. Yeah. Disagree with that one. Okay. I also uh, the, Titanic. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's too long. Yeah. Like, yeah. who's spending four hours in, a, in like? Oh, let me sit in my car for four hours Ooh. and then drive home. Uh, I have heated like, seats, so it's fine. And you know what? Gas is cheap nowadays. Austin Powers, great. Absolutely. It's exactly. It's it's slapsticky. It kind of has an old feel to it. Uh, it hits the bill out of the park, hundred percent. The other two, terrible. Boo. Boo these movies. Yeah, no, bad takes, bad takes. Okay. Austin Powers is an excellent movie to throw in there because it's quick, it's fun, mm. and it's kind of got lots of car scenes, which makes it even funnier. Yeah, perfect. And I'm sure your backyard won't look anything like Southern California, so that's perfect. Uh, number 17 to 15, if we're keeping up with this premise, we get at number 17, Black Panther, 16, Inception, and 15, The Princess Bride. Um. Okay, so Princess Bride, yeah, yep. sure, oh, sure, um, you, absolutely. You need a girl movie, love story. You just kind of want something a little bit more family friendly in terms of genre pieces. If you wanted a chick flick, Princess Bride is a pretty simple film for like boys to watch, and you're like, yeah, it's a badass movie. Okay, sweet, cool, definitely. Yeah, um, Inception. I'm like, it's a little long. Yeah, but I feel like <sighs> but no, it's the an action visual, movie. But it's, visually, it's supposed. To, I again, I think it's it, it looks too nice, probably. Yeah, I was also thinking like. Is the only joke instead of being like we're watching a movie, instead of in a theater but in a car, it's kind of like oh, that's sure. the only like I, I that could be funny, but yeah, that's a weird take as well. Okay, okay, that's fair. Uh, and then finally, Black Panther. I'll be honest, with you, I saw Black Panther a couple times. I don't know if I'm the most biggest fan of Black Panther. I'm like, it was okay. Yeah, it was okay. Yeah. So I don't know yeah. if I'd watch I mean, it outside. Although it is in the jungle. Okay. But if I wanted to watch yeah. a story about an uncle or a family member showing up and like killing a king and then someone having to like come back from being banished to like rise up and fight them with a bunch of like hyenas and a little Pumba guy that like sings a song, wouldn't I just watch the animated Lion King? Oh. No. Black yeah. Panther is a completely different, unique original story oh yeah okay sorry it's true I, i've only watched black panther once yeah so i'm like i feel like i'm not educated enough to speak on this but it might you work know. you know what you know what in all fairness if you're outside it's beautiful there's birds chirping it it it's a visually stunning movie a lot of the scenes that they do out in like the... i would watch black panther over beauty and the beast live action yes oh and inception and titanic yeah exactly like it, it's above those in my mind but i'm like yeah i don't know if it, it's got that the next ones 14 to 12 gets us 14 is the breakfast club 13 is forrest gump and number 12 is pirates of the caribbean see now we're getting into the meat and potatoes after that 15 that 15 mark kind of onward you're like mm. oh baby those are some bangers yeah. there yes yes pirates of the caribbean i'm like can you watch it on a boat yeah out, out a boat on a sea with like a lake in the background with some like i i, I get it i'm like yep cool 100 percent. any of the pirates movies probably work maybe not the third one or the fourth one yeah the fifth one, but one of the first two. Oh man, good, yeah, definitely, definitely. Forrest Gump, I'm sure, yeah. I just like that movie. Yeah, um, I know it's one of those. I'm like the Breakfast. I can't say no to this movie. Yeah, 
Um, and then Breakfast Club, I'm like, this is this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, yeah, and all this works. This yeah. one oddly works. Yeah, a teen movie that's kind of a struggle that kind of seems goofy up front, has some darker, deeper meanings. And you're like, okay, cool, great, perfect. Yeah, that works. And yeah, like Forrest Gump, it's one of those movies I put on and I just turn it off and I'll, like, I go to turn it off when it's bad and you just watch the whole thing because it's great. So good old Forrest Gump. Yeah. Let's do, I guess we'll just kind of keep going in this format. Uh, sure. Yeah, sure. So that number. 11 to 9 uh we've got number 11 is gremlins followed by number 10 is the goonies and number nine is die hard yeah yeah so, goonies, so uh... we've already discussed we think it fits it kind of works with the aesthetic the lower quality sure perfect cake okay. we don't need to spend a lot of time on that gremlins eh, gremlins work for you yeah it does it does uh mostly because they start messing around with the projector and i'm like that would be fun. Oh, yeah, with the projector and the screen. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, yeah. Die Hard. I don't know if I would say... Uh... It's hard to watch Die Hard not at Christmas. Yeah, and I want to be outside and it's like hot and maybe there's like a fire table going or something. So I would say maybe Die Hard. Like, again, great movie. It's fine. I don't know if it fits exactly the genre. Like, if you want to go yeah. best action movie, yeah, of course, you need an action movie. Put it in there, but... I guess if like Matrix or the sorry the Terminator Matrix is making it, I guess we just put Die Hard in there as well. Yeah, sure. Yeah, ooh, more or less. Ooh, these next three are gonna be hard to beat. Like this might be like the salt most solid three, eight to six. That gets us Back to the Future at eight. Number seven is Ghostbusters, and number nine is Raiders of the Lost Ark. Are you kidding me? Could you imagine that as a triple feature? Oh baby, those might be like some of the best movies. Yeah, definitely. I can't praise these three movies enough yes they all work for driving because they're kind of yep. they got that 80s vibe to them mm -hmm. but they're also just amazing movies and i would watch these any day of the week and you throw in the nostalgia like back to the future come on that one's just made for a drive-in we um, so, so me and my wife actually we watch a lot of movies outside in our backyard <laughs> uh one of them was back to the future uh as it it got dark around the it started at least getting dusk around kind of like the enchanted chairman under the sea dance. Uh, it then became like pitch black and the wind picked up during the, the climax. I was like, this really adds to something like the thrill that maybe there's like a thunderstorm in my, my approach or something. Back to the future. Absolutely great knockout. If you can time it with like the climax when it gets dark outside. So in the summer it's tough because the sun stays out till 1130. Maybe you can get that sweet spot where like sunsets at like 10 or nine and you're doing that. Oh, baby. It's good. Ghostbusters obviously just kind of has that great feel, uh, low, low, low def, uh, and Raiders. It's a fun action family. I would say this is like a family action movie that's kind of fun. That you put on with like mom and dad and you're like, yeah. Whereas they don't know if they'd appreciate Die Hard as much as Raiders. No. And you probably can't show no. like Die Hard to children. No. Yeah. No. And, and minus, yeah, there's some people that die in Raiders. Yeah, but it's like but... funny. When he shoots the guy, everyone's like, ha <laughs> windy. <laughs> Look at that guy getting his head into the put into the propeller. <laughs> Goofy guy. Doesn't the one guy get murdered by spikes though? Yeah, it's again, it's still Disney it, it's I don't know, there's a Disney theme park ride about it. I don't know, what do I want to say? It's like the family that's friendly. Fair. I don't know. I, again I I'd show children and be like, okay, that's fine. So we have five movies left. Do we want to do three, two how about just a countdown in general? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, we'll just do countdown. All yeah. right, so the top five according to this list, the last five we'll talk about before we get out of here today. Oh, we're running behind on time good for us good job woo at number five is blade runner i guess too yes, dark and I, boring yeah like uh no this is this is when i was staring at being like really yeah. if you're gonna have blade runner it's like swap this with like aliens or something like sure. why blade runner yeah um like i and i like blade runner but i'm like but blade runner is just the way we slow movie that's about like the super high fidelity of the cinematography yeah. and and yeah, like, it's like you need good sound to appreciate it and like if you want this weird sci-fi go matrix yeah, yeah yeah i would go aliens over this any day and it's not even on this list yeah so. I, I just think aliens like too is like too raw like watching it outside, you're like, ah, there, there are some movies that we like, oh, you can't watch that outside because it's like too You intense. can watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre outside. It's fine. No, I'm not allowed. I kept I kept pushing for Friday the 13th. That's the movie I wanted to watch outside of the lake, but they told me, no, you, we're staying in a cabin on a lake. We're not allowed to watch this. I'm like, but it's my favorite. How about number four? Texas Chainsaw, man. I'm telling yeah, you. Okay. 
right. Really good sound system. Blare that chainsaw. It's like, okay. <laughs> just people screaming and dying in pain for three hours. We go like, there's people that are really getting murdered over there. How about number four? We get E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Yeah, I dig it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it kind of works. It. Yeah, it's, Especially it's, if you're outside and it's kind of like grassy. You feel like E.T. Will, might be watching that movie in the bushes with you. Oh, there's some trees around. Perfect. Number three, especially if you're a beer, mm-hmm. large body of water, I would recommend the classic Jaws. Again, another movie that I'm like, it would be great on a boat. Yeah, yeah. That would be. That Tyson's double feature, Pirates, then Jaws. Okay. <laughs> It's perfect. Oh, and, and it's just absolutely. It's got it's got the Spielberg magic. It's got it's 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 shot beautifully. The sound quality uh, and image, if it was grained a little bit, would just look much more terrifying, realistic, perfect. And number two, we have Empire Strikes Back. Okay, yeah. There's your sci-fi movie. Yeah, yeah, I get it. It's a little bit. I would do Empire yeah. over Alien or Aliens. Yeah. yeah. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Empire is actually probably a better call in general. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Sweet. And then finally, the number one movie, the best movie. We actually saw this in a drive-in in our at, in our life. And I've watched it outside. I think I'm at like 10 views or something. I'd love it. We're, we might be talking about it shortly back on the podcast because I love this movie so much. Jurassic Park. Yeah. 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 Who doesn't love some Jurassic Park? Oh, it's just so good. I'm actually wearing a Jurassic Park shirt right now. Oh, it's just, it's the greatest, guys. It's so good. Uh, perfect. No, that, that ends our list there. And like I alluded to, kind of more of a, I guess, an announcement. I think we're coming back in two weeks. We've got a Final Fantasy VII show. And then in August, instead of reviewing an old game, uh, we're hitting all our old Jurassic Park movies. So we're hitting kind of three movies in a row. So you hear a lot of us in August. Again, normally we're like, well, we'll slow down and make it easy for ourselves. I'll just make three podcasts so that is much more our speed well the notes yeah no i won't get into semantics it'll be fine so we'll, we'll get into that we're going to review them and i think we have probably newer takes because this we've been doing this now movie takes for a couple years five years probably <laughs> five years i yeah, bet you were probably so, better so i think so yeah. i think so um and in all honesty uh watching these uh movies um makes me just want to buy that collection yeah and enjoy it yeah sweet Cool. So with that, though, that wraps up uh, this episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed kind of our summer drive-in, our summer classic episode of the Goonies. It pairs nicely with Goonies 2. You just have to listen to this podcast and then jump back on Goonies 2 and be like, oh, I get it. Oh, yes. now yep. oh, Annie the Mermaid, of course. Of course, of the course. mermaid. Of course. She was right there next to the octopus. She helped very critically in that fight. Yeah, Data it was his favorite, his favorite part. So there you go. So with that uh, done, we are finished. Uh, I think all we have to say is bye, and we'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Yeah. Okay. See you guys then. Bye. Bye. <laughs>